Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Your host today is Richard Fields. Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we've got John Cameron and Gail Morgan. And the stimulus bill passed a week or two ago, but we need to talk about it a little bit because uh, according to the political insiders, the stimulus bill is now going to be used as a political <coughs> by the Democrats, of course. This is by, from the New York Times, who else? Uh, let, me, let me throw that open to you guys. How do you think the stimulus bill can actually be used as a political weapon, presumably in the 22 or the 24 elections? Well, I'm gonna say obviously, uh, their, their goal is to give the economy a boost just in time for the midterms. That way, everybody thinks that they have uh, run everything the right way, and now, voila, the Democrats are in charge and everything is awesome. I don't predict that myself, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, I think they're, they're, uh, I read the New York Times article, and I think it's a pipe dream. Uh, I think people are, are disgusted with government, people both on the, 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 the left, right, whatever you want to call them, the light, or the reft, call them the rift. Um, that, you know, the idea that they can uh, uh, do all the things they're doing, uh, have the, the uh, media basically canceling the cancel culture, the, the obvious, uh, the spending is so obviously not COVID related. And the, the COVID spending problems are not because of COVID, but because of the lockdowns, which are government driven. Um, I think the idea that they they think they're going to pick up seats, which runs counter to history. Uh, you know, after Obama's great victories in with the uh, Obamacare and whatever else he thinks he did, uh, the I think that the the Democrats are are more uh, prone to self deception than the Republicans for some reason. I mean, they're both prone to it, but I think the idea that that uh, all the stuff that's going on is going to be seen favorably by by the general American public, other than those those that small percentage that basically you know just wants uh, uh, free beer and free food um, is a pipe dream. I think this 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 whole massive debt and the obvious uh, rewarding of their cronies who got them elected is going to backfire on them in the midterms. That's my feeling. Well, you know what, John, I'm, I'm going, I, I wish you were right, but I'm going to disagree with you vehemently. I think politically this works like a charm because already a majority of Republicans, you heard I said Republicans, and obviously a, a majority of Democrats think it's absolutely great that the government is giving them all $1,400 uh, per head as well as uh, extent, uh, bumped up unemployment benefits of $300. Nobody has actually done the math to figure out that that $1,400 per person is actually costing them five grand or more in the, in, in, because the, the cost is deferred and the, and the benefit is not. The cost of course will be higher taxes or higher inflation uh, in the future. But right now it's $1,400 of free money and nobody, uh, uh, well, a minority of the public, of the voting public is saying, that they don't want the free money, they all do. Now, obviously the lion's share of that money is not going to the $1,400 uh, payments and the $300 uh, unemployment, it's going to crony capitalists, it's going to uh, cities and governments that are already showing tax revenues in 2020 or 2021 that are greater than they were, actually 2020, that were higher than they were in 2019, which means they don't really need the money, it's, but they're, they're getting it. It's going to crony uh, capitalist uh, corporations that uh, are, are, you know, airlines and, you know, the whole, all of the, all of the, uh, all of the businesses that were shut down by the, by the, by the government shutdown, they're getting money, they like it. Uh, there's nobody in the nobody on the benefit end that is saying no. We don't want this. Everybody is saying more, please. The problem, of course, is that the economically it doesn't work. You are absolutely right that economically this will never ever work in the long run. But as Keynes said, in the long run we're all dead. Unfortunately, the long run will come after the 2022 and perhaps even after the, the 2024 elections. 
certainly after the 2022, they're going to get a bump in the economy. The economy is going to go gangbusters for a couple for a couple of years, or at least appear to go gangbusters. The stock market will probably do uh, could. It's all, when you're talking about the stock market, it's really dicey because there's a whole lot of different factors in play. But it, it could also do a, do fairly well because there's a whole lot more Federal Reserve money floating around that could go. That a lot of which ends up in the stock market, even though valuations are at an all-time high. So I, I think that uh, the Democrats politically are doing everything right. Economically, they're doing everything entirely wrong and disastrously wrong. But uh, that's the conundrum, conundrum that we're in. Whenever, whenever, uh, whenever you give people free stuff, they're going to want more free stuff. And they're not going to want that free stuff to end. And when the unemployment benefit bump up to $300 ends, they're going to want more. And the Democrats are going to give it to them. It's a, it's a vicious circle, and it's not going to end until we get into the rip-roaring inflation uh, portion, which will come probably three or four years from now. It won't come right away. I'm going to start a little bit. With John, it's starting on now, but it's not—it's not going to—it's not going to get into full flower for a while. I'm going to side a little bit with John on this one, because this house of cards is not stable enough to to withstand. I don't think more than just a, uh, a six eight months. Uh, the, my reasoning is the bulk of the government bailouts that are included in the stimulus go to the two states whose governors are in trouble. And uh, people are noticing that Cuomo is getting a bunch of the money and that Newsom is getting a bunch of the money. And both of them are, are being told to resign or being recalled at this, this point in time. So uh, I suspect that the, there, there's enough of the population that's smart enough to realize that, that, yeah, it was really cool to get the money, but look at how much money they're spending, how much we're in debt. And I think that's going to come back to roost sooner than later. Well, I, I hope you guys are right, but I, I sincerely doubt it. We will well, see. I think, I think Time we, will should, tell. We, should bet a, we should bet a stiff drink and probably move on to something else. But I, I, uh, I know I talk to people, and I hate to say left and right. I think people that 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 align Republican and people that right rely that align. Uh, liberal Democrat, and I hate that term. And and the crazy, the craziest of the liberal Democrats uh, are loving this because they they are drinking the Kool Aid. But everybody else realizes, uh, you know, they know who kept their kids out of school. They know that the teachers should have been teaching. They know that the only people that are making out are government employees. Uh, and and people that are in bed with the government and there's there's a, there's a lot of anger out there a huge amount of anger and even though you know people are getting a short term gimme what people want is is a job and and all of these all of these programs are in place or have crushed the job creators in this country small businesses can't hire people they can't hire people because people are getting paid an average of with the 300 bucks uh, what is it? I don't know. They were getting paid $963 a week, which is way more than they're earning. So, uh, and, and all of these controls are closing the businesses where they would get jobs. And they know that this can't last forever, except for the, the people that are really drinking the Kool-Aid. And, you know, the, the Democrats, have, if I was more of a cynic than I am, and I'm pretty cynical, I would, I would, uh, I think that the whole purpose of the lockdown and everything else was to destroy the entrepreneurial class in this country, because you know people that, that open restaurants don't vote Democrat. They are they're libertarian Republican people that have run small businesses, and they're the ones getting killed by this thing, and they're the ones that generate jobs. And so problem, the yeah. problem with your analysis is that there are more employees than there are employers, yeah. uh, and that's going to be and, and and everybody votes. It's one vote per person, not one vote per dollar uh, control. Uh, but the, this whole thing is not going to be financed by money printing. Most of it is going to be printed by money printing. Uh, we've printed more more in the last year or two than like 25 percent of all the money has ever been printed by the Federal Reserve and by printed. I mean, you know, run off the the, uh, the digital printing press created out of nothing more. Most of that or 25 percent of all the money ever cr created by the by the feds since the beginning of the country, or at least since 1913, has been in the last year or two. 
tax increases are coming. Biden yeah. is already floating the idea of increasing. Now you see, people hate tax yeah. increases. Yeah, they do. Uh, but the, but they're but they're again the Democrats are doing it cleverly. They're saying it's not going to affect you, Joe Lunch Bucket, because we're only going to get tax capital gains that will affect the top five or ten percent of the population uh, significantly, but nobody else at all. And we're going to uh, tax high income earners, uh, not specifying what high income ends is. And with the full knowledge that uh, as time goes by, high income will be either inflated to a point where everybody is in high income or the limits will come down, probably the, the former. So uh, what's your, what, are your, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the coming Biden tax increases? Well, I, I would say people, uh, you know, you're talking about the people not being bright enough. To, to you know realize that that the can's getting kicked down the road I don't think bright, people are bright enough to to uh, to to first of all uh, understand the fine print because when they see tax increase they know every single time they've seen the word tax increase in the past and it's only going to infect the rich and it's only going to affect the I say infect I did that accidentally but it's true and a, an infection of the rich makes all of us sick that people are going to see tax increase and that's what they'll see. And they're going to see, uh, you know, these, the, the rich people that fuel the economy that pay all the taxes, uh, not be able to open up the next coffee shop, not being able to open up the factory and all the rest of that. So, you know, if you're, you're counting on people to be, you know, too stupid to, um, to realize the cans getting kicked down the road, then you got to count on people being too stupid to read past tax increase. So you can't have it both ways, that they're, they're too dumb to see the can getting kicked down the road, but smart enough to read a tax bill. Nobody reads tax bills anyway. That's why they're so long, so nobody will bother to read them. But anyway, I think we'll probably move on to, let's talk, are we, we gonna ever talk about guns? I like talking about guns. Fine, we can talk about guns because that's the next topic here. They're coming for our guns. Uh, the House passed some of the most uh, far-reaching uh, gun control uh, bills uh, that have uh, has been passed in, I think decades, and uh, with uh, with the Senate in play, uh, with uh, fifty percent of the control by uh, Democrats and a few Republican votes that can be peeled off, they're uh, going to come after our guns. You have the details on that, John? Well, it's uh, <coughs> it's talking about uh, private sales will need to, to people who do private sales will need. From what I understand, I haven't read the full text. I always get sick when I read. <coughs> excuse me, when I actually read the laws they're writing because they're designed to, you know, either lull you to sleep or, or give you an instant stroke and, and uh, just because you're so mad. But, you know, private individuals, um, like gun shows and all the rest of that, I assume, are going to have to run back background checks on people. They're giving the, the feds longer to do background checks. They're requiring background checks in more instances. And, of course, the, the lamestream media, you know, mentioned one person who who uh, was killed by by someone who uh, passed a background check, but the felony conviction didn't show up. The guy that that I guess shot up a, a, a black church and, and killed nine people. But the 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 other side with with the the NRA having uh, kind of imploded. Um, you know, there's, there's nobody really taking up the gauntlet. And, and, you know, what I'd like to see is, you know, if Republicans are going to pretend like they're different, is have them say that, you know, 2.3 million crimes a year are, are prevented by armed citizenry. You know, not just holding a gun in their hand and waving it about, but the fact they have. If, if you want to see what the world looks like uh, where little old ladies can't have a shotgun or a pistol in their house uh, to protect, protect themselves, then, then look at some of the crime statistics in, in the UK. Uh, three quarters of, of home invasions there take place uh, while people are in the home. You know, they kick the door and come in because they know that they're not going to face a shotgun on the other side. And, and the, the riots and the looting have left a horrible taste in everybody's mouth. And that's why gun sales have gone through the roof. So you know, when, when the government says, you know, we're going to make it harder for you to get something that you felt the need to go out and buy in record numbers last year because we couldn't protect you or refuse to protect you from rioting in the streets. I mean, you know, Minneapolis lost, uh, what, $10 billion worth of, of business. Target is closing down its headquarters there. All these cities that, that let these fires go unquenched. 
or people are fleeing in droves from them and, and people are upset. So, you know, it, America doesn't want less guns. America wants more guns. The best yeah, way, I mean, I tend to, go ahead, Gail. The best way to increase gun sales is to say you're making a law against them. That yeah. seems to spur gun sales and maybe, maybe a majority of people will run out and get them if they see that coming. The other thing is, there's that old saying we all know, when guns are outlawed, only Antifa will have guns. Mm. Well, having well, seen and those and Antifa and examples, I, I don't know if any of them would know which end of a gun to put in their mouth, which they should. But uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm being facetious here. Go ahead, Richard, you were saying something. No, I was going to say that uh, gun rights, for all of the rhetoric and all of the, you know, the, the yahoos who talk about gun rights, are extremely important. Because, I mean, I kind of like to look at the, at the Bill of Rights on, on, in three tiers. The, uh, the, bottom, the, the first tier is gun rights. It's the ability to defend your own person. Uh, if you can't defend your own person, if you can't defend yourself or your loved ones, then the rest of your rights are kind of worthless. Who cares about uh, the First Amendment if you're dead? The second tier of rights are property rights. If you can't afford to buy, uh, you know, to buy an ad or to uh, make yourself heard uh, through the press or through the media. Uh, property rights are, are, are what guarantee enough income so that everybody has uh, uh, access to a bullhorn. If nobody has property, the only access to the bullhorn belongs to the government. Uh, and then the third tier of rights are those in the First Amendment, the right of freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, of religion, and so on. That, those are the, are the rights that we think of when we think of rights, but the, the, those rights do not exist, cannot exist. Uh, safely without property rights at, at, at one level and then one level above that gun gun rights the right to, de to defend yourself so you we're talking about really 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 serious stuff here that the democrats are trying to take away from us and what they're trying to take away is not uh, make the world safer they're trying to make the world safer for a government who wants to control uh, a government who wants to control uh, every uh, every aspect of our lives well, the Second no, Amendment certainly has nothing to do with deer hunting. No. Well, very little. No, I, I, whenever somebody brings up, well, you know, the, the, it, it's, it's <clears throat> such simplistic thinking on the other side that, that you know, if, uh, you know, uh, let's say that all, all guns were illegal. That, that still wouldn't stop people from, I mean, with all the machine shops there are in the world right now, the, the, the Russians keep producing uh, really nice weapons that you can turn out in a, in a machine shop down the street. And now with uh, uh, 3D printing and all the rest of that, uh, you know, it's supposedly, you know, illegal to produce a 3D printer that'll print a gun. But anytime you want a gun, you can either buy one on the street, you can make one, you know, and, and in a wonderful world, you can just walk down your store and buy one as if it was a very expensive bag of popcorn. But you know the 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 idea that that somehow uh, you know people shouldn't have access to the most advanced weaponry that they can get on their their hands on is ludicrous because our founding fathers had uh, the most advanced weaponry they could get their hands on and that's the only reason which was a rifle which was the only reason why small bands of revolutionaries uh, could could uh, fire accurately. And take on the mass might of of the the British Army, and you know without the ability of those people to have the 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 most advanced technology they could get their hands on, that war would have gone the other way. We would probably have more rights now than under British rule than we currently do, but that's a whole different story. Yeah, I know it was not even rifle; it was muskets. But that you know is still the most advanced technology: muskets and cannons. Yeah. Uh, the um, the other thing that we need to think about when we're talking about gun control and the laws that they're actually proposing is that, are you serious? You really think that if a brother wants to uh, sell his gun to his sister who has been threatened by, in one way or another, that he's going to go to the, uh, the Bureau of Alcohol, Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and get a, you know, do a, a background check? That's not gonna happen. It's, those, are, those are the kind of laws that will not be enforced, cannot be enforced uh, in any serious way. Uh, speaking of, of uh, criminalizing things, Kentucky wants to criminalize giving the bird, flipping the bird to cops 
or even distributing water bottles to uh, uh, people who are at a riot, with a riot defined as five or more people creating a disturbance by a definition of, of course, the cops. Uh, you know, water bottles can project can be projectiles. So, what do you think about that? I think that's I think that's a heck of an idea. The five or more people, as defined by cops. So, uh, how many people are in the assembly in uh, in the state of California? Hundreds. So, if we limit it to five, they they would do much less damage, and they're always yelling and screaming. I'm sure we can find a, a hard hardcore right-wing cop somewhere. We, I think the sheriff in Sacramento might be one to, to declare that a riot. We just shut them down. And maybe if we didn't give them any water, they, they wouldn't be able to talk all day and not ever say anything. And hopefully a few of them would keel over from dehydration. And again, I'm being facetious, but the, the ridiculousness of these rules is, uh, you. I wanna back up to the gun control thing one more time and then I'll move forward if I may. You know, what, what happens when you put laws in place that are ludicrous and unenforceable, there's a trickle down effect to take away from the weight of laws that are right and just and should be on the books that need to be enforced. And, and what happens is eventually you see all laws as being uh, warped and unnecessary or creating favoritism or all the rest of that. And if cops are ignoring some laws because they're ludicrous and enforcing others, then it becomes rule by whim. And that, that kind of Kentucky law does that. It eats away at the fact that laws should be respected. But if you write ludicrous laws and expect somebody to enforce them, they're not going to, especially in Kentucky. You know, well, and the other, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, we already, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, somebody wrote a book called uh, Everybody Commits Three Felonies uh, a Day. Uh, and that's going to be even uh, even more the case if laws like the Kentucky proposal go into effect. So one thing for sure is Kentucky and places like that are going to keep the uh, Civic Legal Foundation and the Institute for Justice in, in business. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of people supporting them so that they can go after some of these crazy laws, which they need to do for sure. But once uh, those get tossed out by the court, uh, at least we have a reprieve that's really hard to overturn. Well, and I think I think I, I, I'm a, you know I, I worked for one of those organizations for a while, and now to me it kind of feels like tilting at windmills um, because. Um, you know, the, the, no matter what the court says, the government simply keeps on doing what it's doing and ignores the court. And, and nobody does anything about it until, you know, uh, the, the, the highest court in the land is uh, brave enough to get rid of qualified immunity and, and government officials start going to jail for things that would get us instantly landed in prison. I don't think you know, all the court wins in the world are going to do any good because people in government simply ignore, now ignore court rulings. Whereas you and I, common citizens, if the court says stop doing this, we have to stop doing it or somebody will show up with a gun in their hand. But if you work for the government and the court says stop doing it, you just say, okay, and you just keep on doing it. And there is no, uh, there's no fallout from it. So, uh, you know, it's great that these wonderful organizations are fighting the fight. But until some of these core deficiencies in, in the difference between how people who work in government are treated and, and people who are private citizens are treated, then I don't, I don't, I think they're, they're kind of tilting at windmills. So anyway. At some point, I'm going to go after yeah. that, you know, that uh, qualified immunity. And, and it's got to be soon. Somebody's got to, somebody's got to carry that one. Well, the, you know, people are saying that the Supreme Court might go after it, but. I don't know, because, you know, if 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 uh, if qualified immunity hadn't existed, Kamala Harris would be in prison and probably everybody who's been elected any uh, public office above board of supervisors. But uh, and maybe that's a good thing. So Careful, you're, you're getting done. close to where I live. Yeah. Well, I said above board of supervisors. So. OK. <laughs> anyway. Well, and, and we keep we keep in mind that you know, going back to Kentucky and they're they're uh, uh, proposed legislation. They're talking about it. They're talking about doing this as a direct result of the riots that took place after the death of Breonna Taylor, who was killed by police mm. erroneously, uh, and uh, that was about a year ago. Uh, and uh, 
that is exactly the wrong message to send to uh, not only Black Lives Matter, but the entire public that uh, you can, the cops can uh, do whatever they damn well please uh, in so-called enforcing the law, not have any repercussions and be able to uh, arrest anybody that uh, disses them by flipping them the bird. Well, um, I think, yeah. I think what, what you're seeing is those laws are a reaction to uh, law, to, to the left kind of cancel culture and all the rest of that. You know, people are, are, are seeing, you know, until very recently, uh, you know, Antifa was in all these other organizations and not, not people marching for Black Lives, but the Black Lives Matter organization itself, which is, you know, has horrible, horrible moral compass. I'm not talking about people marching in the streets because Black Lives do matter, but the organization itself. And, and I think, you know, people are, 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 you know, railing against it. But in Breonna Taylor, um, you know, and I'm, I'm sorry that, that, you know, people have been killed and I grieve for them. I grieve for people, innocents killed by, by cops, especially. But what's happened is uh, more and more and more states have gotten rid of no-knock warrants because of the, the, this one incident you're, you're seeing, I think by the end of a couple more years, there won't be a state in the union that has no knock warrants. Which and, is a good uh, thing. Yeah, which is a great thing because, uh, you know, people make mistakes. They knock on the wrong door and, uh, you know, they use no knock warrant as a, as a, uh, you know, carte blanche to do whatever they want to do. And if they have to, you know, sit in front of a door that might have a gun on the other side of it and identify themselves and say, we're here to serve a warrant. Hopefully there's going to be a whole lot less warrants served because we know that way too many things in this country are a crime. I don't care if somebody's smoking some pot or selling some pot. I don't care if somebody's having sex with a prostitute or selling their services a prostitute. I don't care if somebody's selling single cigarettes on the street instead of a full pack. I don't care. And we need to we need to get rid of these laws, not create more of them. And and getting rid of no knock will will make people a little more hesitant to kick doors in or toss tear gas through a window or all the rest of that. During the four years of the Trump administration, we heard a lot about uh, uh, illegal immigrant children being locked in cages at the border. I mean, we heard a lot of it from the mm. media, as as we should have, because it was they just a, built by Obama, though. It was a, it was well, and, and, and put to use not only by Obama, but with a lot of fanfare by Trump. It was a terrible policy then, and it's a terrible policy now. And the backlog of migrant children in border, border, border patrol custody has increased since the Trump went, uh, left office from, uh, to, to 4,200. That's 3,000 past the legal limit. Are we hearing about it? in the same accusatory tones in the media now as we did four years, three years ago, two years ago. We got about 10 seconds left, Richard. We're not hearing about it at all because the good guys, the good Democrats are doing it and they don't want to do it. They're being forced to do it somehow. I know they are. 10 seconds are up. Thank you very much for being part of the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place on YouTube, on uh, cable uh, channel uh, 17 in Sacramento and uh, ever, everywhere else you can find uh, Libertarian Counterpoint. Just Google it, you'll find it, thanks. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint Show. In Sacramento, Channel 17 on Comcast. Each Thursday at 8 p.m. and each Monday at 5.30 p.m. for the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.